and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. I hope you guys are well and all is going swimming. I don't know why I keep doing that. It's just I'll get stuck in the rut. Anyway, I hope you're all well. All is good here. London is experiencing a heat wave at the moment, and that puts me in a very happy place. I love the sun. I'm a real sun worshipper. I get quite childish and excited, and I love being out, and I love being in the sun, I love being hot. Um, and we are going to be talking about a very special perfume today. Um, we've done quite a lot of list videos lately, so we're going to get back to sort of reviewing singular or talking about singular perfumes in, in, a, in a video. Um, and this is a fragrance I've had for quite a while now, um, and it's just absolutely stunning. But it's also baffled me um, that a fragrance this good gets literally no attention at all. I don't think there's a single review of this on YouTube, which really does surprise me. I think it's mentioned in a couple of videos, and I have, I'm pretty sure I've spoken about it in sort of one of the, the plethora of list videos that we've done. Um, and it's this one from a French house called Le Liquid Imaginaire, and it's called a Desert Suave. And there it is, beautiful bottle, look at that. This cap in itself is a work of art, it's heavy, beautiful it's big and then you have a uh, you know a pressurized atomizer glass bottle type affair um it's fantastic this fragrance and the fact that it gets little or no attention as i say is absolutely baffling me especially when you consider who the nose or the noses are behind it so it's a part it's, there are two people involved in in the creation of this and one is uh, a lady called nizreen or nirene nizreen grill um just a, a quick you know uh explanation i'm going to butcher pronunciation during this video so if you're easily offended by terribly spoken french words then you know i, I do apologize for any offense so it's a partnership between nizreen grill and quentin bish now quentin is you know incredibly prolific he's very much a kind of a nose of the moment you know he's done work for azaro carolina herrera in fact he was responsible for mystery tobacco which is one of the best tobacco fragrances i've ever tried ex nilo l'artisan perfumer comme de garçon essential perfumes eldo jean paul gautier kenzo he's only 39 and he's got hundreds of perfumes under his belt well it seems like it anyway um and he's worked for some really really great houses and i'm a massive fan of his work so much so i have i mean i think i've got more actually but bois imperial very much a fragrance of now this is like this is hot stuff at the moment if you haven't tried this yet you are missing out um and then the new one on salad beautiful and then everybody's favorite or everybody's least favorite Ganymede so Quentin Bish is making some amazing perfumes uh, and I'll be honest with you this is one of them so what we're going to do now I'm wearing it at the moment but I'm going to have another little spray oh we'll go through the notes and then we'll have a bit of a chat about this one because I think it really does need to be discussed so we'll let that settle down and then we'll go through the notes oh so on the top we have dates, you have orange blossom, and you have toasted sesame. Then you have cardamom and clove, you have cedar, you have mandarin orange, and you have rose. There's obviously a lot more going on here, but um, these are kind of like the, the official notes. So, I mean, the fact this has been around since 2018, I mean, the house themselves, they've been around since I think 2011, they've got like 30 perfumes under their belt. So, you know, they're a big house and I see them in Javoy and I see them in the centers. So they are a house that, that are out there. I just, I don't see anything about them really in Fragcom in terms of social media and stuff like that. And it baffles me because everything I've tried from them has been rather, rather lovely. Desert Suave was one that I had to have the second I smelt it. Um, I've been stalking it for a while. I thought I got it for a bargain price and then that didn't fall through. Um, so in the end, I had to, to pay retail for it, which always hurts. But you know, if you want something badly enough and you can, you can justify it and you can afford it, then go for it. So I've had it a while um, and it's just absolutely bloody glorious. Now, when you look at the notes, as we've just gone through, you have dates and you have orange blossom, this toasted sesame and the spices, the cardamom, the cedar, things like that. And then there's a tiny hint of rose in the bottom and the mandarin orange gives this little citrus bite to it. You look at that lot and you think Christmas. Uh, and I think it would be fantastic um, at Christmas as well. Don't get me wrong, I think it worked well in the winter, but I went out for dinner last night with my wife and my son. He 
achieve something magical at school. So we went to our favourite restaurant to uh, to celebrate. But I, we got there early. My wife was coming straight from work uh, and it was roasting, really, really hot. Um, I didn't know what to wear in terms of perfume. So I opted for this as a, just to see how it goes in a hot weather. Uh, as I say, we got to the restaurant early and I was sitting outside the, this pub nearby the restaurant with my son enjoying a quick drink before we went in. And the sun was beating down on us and this perfume was magical. It just, oh, it was everywhere. It was glorious. And I've got to describe this carefully because it's such a beautiful fragrance. There's a lot of florals in it, okay? And I think maybe that might be off-putting for some people, I don't know. But when it hits your skin, you've got these white floral elements. It's more than just orange blossom. There's almost a hint of tuberose. There's no tuberose listed and I can't find anything to say that there is. There's just something about that opening that reminds me of tuberose. So you've probably got some jasmine in there as well. But the orange blossom is quite dominant, especially in the opening. And then this sweet and sticky date-like uh, essence just kind of creeps in and it lifts it up. So you've got this sweet, airy um, feeling that interestingly the the dates almost bring like a honey quality to it but it's not like a, a I mean dates themselves are quite sticky and gooey uh, and honey's obviously you know the stickiest gooeyest thing on the planet um, but it's not too much like that in the air it does feel a little bit sticky when you get in close to it but there's a nuttiness from the toasted sesame and it's just wonderful these spices come in, and I think this is where it all starts to become really, really good in the colder weather. When the spices mix with the sweetness, then you have got those sort of traditional smells that you would associate with Christmas or, you know, winter celebrations and that kind of thing. But there's a clean wood underneath that, and just that little fleck, the speck of citrus that just lightens everything up. But what it is that I think works so well for me is this this perfume is thick on your skin, but it's light in the air. A bit like some of the Stefan Umber Lucas um, fragrances that I've got. They kind of seem very intense the closer you get to them, but in the air they've got this dreamy, sort of swirly quality. They, there's something about wearing this fragrance that is really, really difficult to articulate um, as across the smell. And the closest I can come to it is an analogy I've used in another perfume a long time ago. It's like walking in a cloud. Um, so you can imagine it's called Desert Suave. So you can imagine a desert scenario there, you know, the rolling dunes and all that sort of stuff. And a light sandstorm kicks up. So you're in a, in a comfortable cloud of dust or cloud of sand. But swirling in that, you've got these little shiny jewels, these little specks of light that ping around you and that's what happens with this perfume you've got this cloud of smell around you with little twinkles in it and it's beautiful it's so so lovely and as you're there you're just you're enjoying the fragrance anyone sitting near you is going to be enjoying this fragrance because it's sweet but not overly sweet you know the the spices and the citrus just kind of balance it but you have to say you know i would have to say the overall feel of this perfume is it's a sweet one but it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's calming, it's dreamy, it's exotic, and it does transport you off on a, a sort of a, a desert adventure. You feel like a Bedouin star or something like that. It is lovely. I mean, I'm really, really gushing, but I need to get across just how much I enjoy this perfume. It's fabulous. And when it comes to performance, I think it's, it's perfection. It's very, very long lasting. Um, if you wore it in the morning, by the time you come home in the evening, you would still be aware of it. Um, the projection is pretty strong to start off with, but I don't think this is a perfume that should have massive projection because it is quite weird and wonderful and exotic and spicy. You don't want to ram that down people's throats. And the perfumers, when they've made that, have really understood this. So you have a subtly, a subtle presence. There is a nice sillage to this. It leaves a lovely trail, but it doesn't push out too far. But if you're wearing it, you're in this, this sandstorm, this bubble for the entire you know, day. You're always going to be aware of this perfume. You will get whiffs of it. And when you, know, you wear this in the heat, as I discovered last night, it just seems to change. You become more aware of the minutia of the sort of support materials. These little spices and these little flecks of citrus and the little hints of rose that I didn't really pick up on too much um, when I wore this on, you know, in colder weather. I've not worn it in freezing cold, um, but it was kind of grey and, and not warm at all when I first got the perfume, when I first started wearing it. So, you know, there was a lot of the minutia in the fragrance that I wasn't really picking up on, which I am so picking up on now. It's warm. 
it's glorious. It's certainly, I mean, I'm going on my hot holiday um, later in the year. So I'm definitely bringing this with me. I'll probably take a decant because I don't want anything to happen to this gorgeous bottle. So there, you know, that, that's kind of it. So that leads us to the question, well, who can wear this beautiful perfume? Well, for me, I think anyone can wear this. It's going to be sweet enough for the younger thruster, um, but it's not too sweet for us more mature fragrance enthusiasts. It is slightly feminine leaning because of the florals, and there are a lot of florals that, that you're really aware of the florals in the opening. And that might scare off some, some, some guys, I get that. Um, you know, you have to wear what you feel comfortable wearing. If you're not enjoying the perfume and it's not to your taste, then why are you wearing it? Um, for me and for most people I know that are really into fragrance, they will love that floral start to the perfume. It's beautiful, but it makes it completely unisex. Um, anyone can wear this fragrance, anyone, any age, you know, it's just beautiful. It might be a little too sweet for some because of this honey date kind of vibe, but for me, I think it's perfectly pitched. So, you know, it is gonna be one that you're gonna to need to try. Obviously, it's uh, it's not a blind buy, it's an expensive perfume, um, but not by niche standards. I think you can get this 100 ml bottle for around 160 pounds. Um, and that's retail, but you'll probably be able to get it cheaper from other places. So just look around. Um, it is lovely. It really is good. The performance is perfect. It's a quality perfume. And you just understand when you wear it, there's been an awful lot of thought process going into the making of this fragrance. You know, it's a world away from Ganymede um, and Bois Imperial. They're not alike at all. You know, it's not you know, Quentin sometimes is being accused of having a signature sort of DNA that gets used over and over again. And when people say that, I just think they haven't smelt enough of his work um, because, yeah, there are some similarities between these two. That's not, um, between, well, actually between all three, but these two especially are very, very similar. This one, nothing like. So, you know, if people do think that Quentin's a bit of a one-trick pony, then I strongly recommend that they smell some of his other work um, because, you know, there's a real sort of broad... Uh, spectrum of, of perfumes that, that he's made and this this is just one of the best I think this is uh, a masterpiece and I think it's one that is waiting to be discovered so if you have tried uh, Desert Suave please let me know I'd love to hear your thoughts on it um, hit us up on Instagram and we can have a chat about it um, and if you want any more information about the perfume of course please message me and I'll do the best I can to describe it um, in any more detail or answer any other questions you have um, I'm absolutely blown away by this one I think everything about it is perfect the presentation the bottle the fragrance the performance the smell obviously the most important thing is the smell and it smells fantastic so there you go I think I've gushed on long enough I've been waxing lyrical about Desert Suave for quite a lot. And I do, you know, really, really appreciate you spending your time with us. So from me and Rich, thank you very much for your time and we shall see you on the next video. Cheers, thanks, and <laughs> bye.